Where do the Azeris really come from? For centuries, this question has puzzled historians. Some say Azeris are the true descendants of the ancient Caucasian peoples. Others argue their roots stretch even further, connected to Persians, Turks, and even the earliest steppe nomads who roamed Eurasia. But now, for the first time, DNA is giving us real answers. And what scientists have discovered is nothing short of shocking. So stay with me until the end, because we're about to uncover the hidden truths of Azeri DNA. But before we dive in, let me ask you, do you think Azeris are more closely related to Turks, Persians, or the ancient peoples of the Caucasus? Long before the word Azerbaijan even existed, the land by the Caspian Sea was already home to humans. We're talking thousands of years before recorded history. South Caucasus, the land between Black Sea and the Caspian, is one of the oldest continuously inhabited places on Earth. Archaeologists have found evidence of early humans here stretching back almost 40,000 years. Imagine small groups of hunter-gatherers moving through the valleys and mountains. They left behind stone tools, cave paintings, and the bones of animals they hunted. These were the very first ancestors of the people who would one day become Azeris. Over time, as farming spread from the Fertile Crescent, this region became a meeting ground for different cultures. Farmers from Mesopotamia moved north. Steppe nomads came down from the Eurasian plains. Local tribes built villages and towns. By around 3,000 years ago, the land of modern-day Azerbaijan was a true crossroads of civilizations. The ancient Persians controlled parts of it. Scythian horsemen rode through its plains. And in the mountains lived a mysterious people known as the Caucasian Albanians, not to be confused with today's Albanians of the Balkans. These Caucasian Albanians left their own mark. They had their own language, their own kingdoms, traditions. And while their culture disappeared over time, but DNA did not. Modern studies show that Azeris still carry traces of these ancient Caucasian tribes deep in their genetic code. So the first layer of Azeri DNA comes from the indigenous peoples of the Caucasus, who were here long before Turks or Persians arrived. Now let's fast forward to the Middle Ages. Around the 11th century, a massive change swept across this region, the arrival of Turkic tribes. The most famous among them were the Oguz Turks, a nomadic tribes from Central Asia who traveled on horseback, moved their families in wagons, and lived by hunting and warfare. When they entered the Caucasus, they didn't just pass through. They stayed, fought wars, they conquered cities, and eventually spread their language and culture. And this is where the big debate begins. Many people assume that when the Turkic tribes arrived, they completely replaced the local population. That Azeris today must be direct descendants of Central Asian Turks. But DNA tells a very different story. Modern genetic studies show that while Azeris do carry some Turkic genes, the majority of their DNA is not from Central Asia at all. In fact, most Azeris are far more closely related to their Caucasus neighbors, Georgians and Armenians, than to the Kazakhs or Uzbeks of the steppe. So what really happened? The truth is that when the Turkic tribes arrived, they didn't replace the locals. They mixed with them. And even more importantly, they changed the language and culture. This is what scientists call a language shift. The native people of Azerbaijan gradually adopted the Turkic tongue while still passing down most of their original genes. That's why today Azeris speak a Turkic language, but their DNA tells us they are mostly descended from the ancient Caucasian and Iranian peoples who lived here long before the Turks arrived. This contrast between language and genetics is one of the most fascinating parts of the Azeri story. Of course, Turks weren't the only outsiders who left their mark on Azerbaijan. For centuries, this land was part of the great Persian empires. From the mighty Achaemenids, who ruled under kings like Cyrus and Darius, to the later Sassanids, Persians left a deep imprint on the region. Zoroastrian fire temples once burned on Azeri soil. Persian kings built roads, fortresses, and cities here. And the genes tell the same story. Many Azeris today carry strong Iranian-related DNA. 
This means that part of their ancestry comes directly from the ancient Persians and Medes, who spread their influence across the region thousands of years ago. Even after the Islamic conquest, when religion shifted to Islam, Persian influence remained strong. The Safavid Empire, which ruled in the 16th century, was founded by Azeri-speaking leaders, but deeply tied to Persian culture and politics. This blending shaped the Azeri identity into something unique, a people who spoke a Turkic tongue, lived in the Caucasus Mountains, and yet carried Persian traditions and ancestry within their blood. When you listen to Azeri music or read Azeri poetry, you can still feel the Persian touch. It's a reminder that DNA isn't just about genes, it's also about culture, ideas, and shared history. Now here's the part most people overlook, the Caucasian genetic layer. Remember those ancient tribes we mentioned earlier? The Caucasian Albanians, the mountain peoples, the early farmers. They didn't vanish. Their descendants are still here, hidden in the Azeri genome. Modern studies show that Azeris share a strong Caucasus genetic signature. This is the same deep ancestry that you find in Georgians, Armenians, and Dagestanis. It's an ancient fingerprint, going back tens of thousands of years. This makes sense because geography shapes genetics. The Caucasus Mountains have always been a natural barrier and a homeland. No matter how many empires passed through, Persians, Turks, Russians, the local population remained. They absorbed new influences, but they never disappeared. That's why Azeris today are not simply Turks. They are a blend. Their DNA is a layered story, Caucasus base from the earliest inhabitants, Persian overlay from centuries of empire, Turkic influence from the migrations of the Middle Ages. It's this blend that makes Azeris unique. And it's why their DNA tells us something very important. Cultures can change, languages can change, religions can change. But the roots of a people often go much deeper, surviving for thousands of years. Every nation has layers in its history. But for the Azeris, those layers are especially rich. Their story is not about one people replacing another. It's about blending. Imagine the Azeri identity as a woven carpet. Each thread is a different color, representing a different past. Alone, a single thread doesn't tell the story. But woven together, the threads create a pattern that is unique. The first and deepest thread is the Caucasus itself. These are the roots of the land, the tribes and farmers who lived here for tens of thousands of years. Their DNA is still alive in Azeris today. The second layer comes from Persia. For centuries, this land was ruled by Persian empires. The genes of those ancient rulers, soldiers, and settlers mixed with the locals. Even today, traces of Persian ancestry run strong in Azeri DNA. The third layer is Turkic influence. When nomads rode in from Central Asia, they brought their language and their culture. Azeris adopted Turkic speech, Turkic traditions, and a Turkic identity. Yet genetically, the local roots remained stronger. So, Azeris are not just Turks. They are not just Persians or Caucasians. They are the blend of all three. This is why their DNA is so fascinating. It tells us that cultures can change, languages can shift, but people carry the memory of every era in their blood. Now here's where it gets really interesting. Modern science has revealed some surprises about Azeri DNA that many people didn't expect. The first surprise is, Azeris are genetically closer to their neighbors in the Caucasus, like Armenians and Georgians, than they are to Turks living far away in Central Asia. Think about that. Azeris speak a Turkic language, share Turkic traditions, and often see themselves as part of the Turkic world. But their DNA shows that they are, in fact, much more closely tied to the Caucasus peoples who live right next door. The second surprise is about language versus genetics. For a long time, people assumed that if a nation speaks a Turkic language, it must also be genetically Turkic. But Azeris show us that's not true. Their DNA proves that language can spread without replacing the people themselves. Culture can change 
while genes remain. The third surprise is about deep time. Many Azeris carry genetic markers that go back tens of thousands of years to the very first humans who settled in the Caucasus. These are roots older than any empire, older than Persians or Turks. DNA shows that no people are ever pure. Every nation is made of migrations, mixtures, and exchanges. Azeris are living proof of this. They are the children of the Caucasus, shaped by Persia and enriched by Turkic influence. You might wonder, why does all of this matter? Why should we care about the DNA of a modern people? The answer is simple, because identity shapes how we see ourselves and how we see each other. DNA can either confirm those stories or challenge them. For Azeris, the DNA story tells them something powerful. It says, You are not just one thing. You are many things at once. Politically, Azeris are often told they are purely Turkic. But science shows they also carry Persian and Caucasian ancestry. Their true identity is broader than any single label. This also matters for understanding history. In a world where people argue about identity, purity, and origins, the Azeri story is a reminder that we are all connected. Nations are not made of walls, but of bridges. It also matters for the diaspora. Millions of Azeris live outside Azerbaijan, in Iran, Turkey, Russia, and beyond. For them, DNA is a way of carrying their homeland wherever they go. It is proof that no matter where they live, they carry inside them the story of the Caucasus, Persia, and Turkic migrations. And finally, history is not just kings, wars, and borders. History is also inside our bodies, in the genes we inherit. And sometimes, DNA tells stories that politics does not want to admit. So in the end, how do we define the Azeris? On the surface, they're simply a Turkic-speaking nation in the Caucasus, but beneath the surface lies a much older and richer truth. They are the children of the Caucasus Mountains, carrying genes as old as time. They are the heirs of Persia, with DNA from ancient kings and empires. They are the legacy of Turkic nomads, whose language still shapes their world. Together, these layers form one people, the Azeris. We should stop thinking of identity as something pure and simple. Identity is not one color, but many colors woven together. It is not one line, but many lines crossing and meeting. The Azeri story is not unique. Every nation is like this, made of mixtures, migrations, and forgotten ancestors. But the Azeris are a clear example of how powerful that truth really is. The Azeris remind us that we all carry ancient worlds inside us, that even when languages change, cultures shift, the blood remembers. And that is the deepest truth of all. The history of the Azeri people is a story of layers, from ancient Caucasian tribes and Persian empires to Turkic migrations and modern nations. Every chapter has left its mark on the Azeri genetic code. If you've enjoyed this journey into the DNA of Azerbaijan, let us know in the comments. Have you taken a DNA test and found out you have roots in the Caucasus? Or maybe you've always wondered about the origins of your family's traditions, language, or culture. Share your stories, we'd love to hear them. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more history and ancestry content, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.